All right, this is your brother Aisha Yara coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, If You Did Not Take the RFID Microchip. All right. If you did not take the RFID microchip. Now I got inspired to do this lesson because of this picture that I came across from the brother uh, Azan Amoth. Came out about a week and a half ago. And uh, pretty much as you can see within this picture, it starts off with if you did not take the RFID microchip, you see images. You see persecution, stoning, cast into prison, prison, uh, Salakia, and beheading. All right, and these are all the things that we know are going to happen once we deny the uh, the chip, the MOTB. All right, these are the things that we expect to happen because it is written. We're going to be persecuted for denying Esau's system, which is his new world order. All right, and the scripture speaks about this. The scripture, the scripture speaks about us being cast into prison. The scripture speaks about us becoming martyrs, which is the beheading. All right, persecution because of martial law. All right, all of these things are going to happen. But these are going to be the ways that we show our faith and prove it by going through these horrible times that's right here. All right, because while everybody else in the world is getting ready to celebrate these holidays and they don't have a worry in the world right now, everybody's just thinking about, you know, getting ready to open up gifts. Everybody's preparing themselves for the new year, getting ready to watch the ball drop singing all kind of songs and everything like that that's what's on their mind right now what's on our mind is this because we understand that this can happen this could happen in a couple of months you don't know man this could happen in a few months because the thing is there's a lot of things that's going on in the world right now and everything is leading to these situations so this is what we think about every single day this is the first thing we think about when we wake up this is the last thing we think about when we go to sleep before we go to sleep all right because we understand that the most high yahweh bashim yahweh shai is getting ready to bring great judgment upon this earth and he's going to allow this to happen in order for us to prove to him that we are worthy enough to become part of that hundred and forty four thousand and a great multitude that comes afterwards all right so this is what we got to prepare ourselves for this is not a thing for the week all right it's not a thing where you can just say i'm an israelite and you just be happy about it you got to understand what you're involved in man when you go out there you start teaching esau is watching man esau is watching you already know there's police officers that's recording these different things and they're sending it to whatever it is that they need to send it to when we upload these videos you already know they got all of the technology and the power to trace where we actually live at you know what we're doing all kind of things man so you got to understand what you're involved in and what you're involved in is doing the work of yahweh bashim yahweh shine and defending the gospel no matter what when you read the scriptures all of our forefathers went through these type of times but you got to remember as well that each and every single time our forefathers went through these type of situations they always came out on top man and the reason being is because they kept what? Faith. They kept faith. They believed. And guess what? They were rewarded for keeping the word and standing stiff for the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So this is the same thing that we have to do today. All right. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. We're going to get second address, as you can see right here. Second address chapter 16. We're going to go to verse 37. It says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh. And are not slack all right the plagues are coming and they're not taking forever the most high speeding things up like the scriptures say he's going to shorten the days for the elect sake that's why all of these days are going past so fast because the elect right now we're the hopeful elect we get tired of being here and the most high is hearing our prayers when we call upon the names of yahweh and yahweh shai and we ask him to hurry up and bring destruction upon this place he hears that and that's why he's speeding up the days. So the plagues are not slack. They are close. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb, which pains 
when a child coming forth, they slack not a moment. When it's time for delivery, the woman cannot say, I don't want to have this child yet. She has to bring it forth. And that's exactly what's happening within the spirit of prophecy. It's that time. And the Most High is going to allow this judgment and all of these prophecies come to pass. And they're not going to slack a moment. Once the Most High gives orders to the angels and to Yahweh Shai, that's it. Ain't no holding back. This is why you're supposed to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai every single day because you don't want to get caught in the midst of the great judgment that he's getting ready to bring upon the earth. All right. Verse 39, it says, even so shall the not the even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make ye ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. So you got to get ready for the battle, which is the end of the world, which means the end of Esau's world. Just like it reads in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is getting ready to end this age, this rulership. And he's getting ready to bring in the everlasting kingdom, which is going to belong to us. Starting with Yahweh Shai, then King David, then the 12 apostles, 144,000 on down. All right, and it's going to belong to the Israelites. So you got to get ready for the battle. And that battle is as soon as shit hits the fan. All right, when the market crash. Maybe an e a EMP attack, World War Three goes full blown. The MOTB is mandatory. The chip is mandatory. All right. When you uh, go outside and you see that, or you go inside of a grocery store, you see that the food is super expensive. Even though it's super expensive now, but I'm talking about to get a loaf of bread, it costs like fifteen dollars. So you already know if you want to get a pack of chicken breasts, the chicken breasts can cost around forty, fifty dollars. These are the times that we coming into. You're going to see the gas prices go back up. People are already getting ready, getting ready to the point where they was ready to break when they saw gas hit $5. What was that, last year? All right, people was going crazy. But the thing is, it's going to get worse than that. The price is going to be around $6, $7, $8, $9, $9, maybe even $10 a gallon. And people are going to lose it, man. You may get to the point where you might try to go to the ATM and you can't um, withdraw any money and the reason being is because they're bringing in the digital system they're going to tell you if you want to live within this society you have to take the RFID microchip all right so you got to get ready for the battle man because it says right here and even those and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth you got to get ready to move man you got to get ready to drop everything that you ever worked for on this side and leave it alone and just be out there until Yahweh Shai comes back. All right. Those are the times that we coming into. So you got to prepare your spirit for these for this, for this man, because. Hey, as much as we want to get out of here, this is not going to be an easy thing. All right. So this is Luke chapter 21, verse 10. It says, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and its prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And they shall turn to you for a testimony. This is what's getting ready to happen to us now. We're going to be persecuted and delivered into these female camps. Or whatever the case may be. And it's going to be because we're defending the gospel. We're bringing out the truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And we're telling our people exactly who they are. Which are the chosen people. Which consists of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Telling you that you are the chosen people of God and his son. And Esau doesn't like that. And the reason he doesn't like that is because he enjoys being in rulership right now. He doesn't want that to end. So, and then, so for him, he's thinking that he's going to be able to up, uh, upset prophecy. So he's going to try to kill everybody that's within this truth. You got to let that sink in your head, man. And the thing is, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> you can't do nothing about it. You can't get no guns. You can't learn how to fight or do all of these things that you think that can get you away from the situation. Because we all, as we all know, the most High creates good and evil. The Most High delivers and he kills. So it's up to the Most High if he wants you to live or not. 
And this ain't the time for you to be trying to buck up against Esau anyway. This is him within his rulership and power. You can't do anything. A greater power has to come and take out this, this rulership, man. And that's going to be Yahweh Shai. All right? So you got to allow these things to happen. You got to go through this persecution in order to prove to Yahweh Shai that you're ready for salvation and you're worthy enough for um to be being on that chariot. All right? Verse uh, 14, it says, Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer, but I will give you a mouth and a, a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betray betrayed both by parents and brethren, and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. This is another thing that's coming. The people that you think that were close to you, your parents, like it says right here, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your close friends, co-workers, your gym buddy, whoever. All of those people that you think are close to you when shit start hit the fan and they realize that they could be in danger just from knowing you. Because that's how Esau is going to play this game, man. He's going to go up to the people that's close to you and be like, look, you know this person? This person been out here saying this, doing that or whatever. And they're going to threaten them, man. And guess what? Your close people, your blood are going to give you up, man, because they don't want anything to do with what? Death. Death and persecution. Because they're going to follow suit. When these things happen, they're going to be like, you know what? No, I ain't got time for this. They're going to go the easy way out. Quote, unquote. <laughs> they're going to take that chip, man. They're going to take that chip because they're going to be like, look, this is the only way that we can live. I don't want to lose my job. You think about all the success a lot of our people have positions that our people are put in families that they have to take care of the children may be threatened all kind of things man they not gonna uh be strong for this they don't have faith like that they don't have faith at all at all man see us if you got children within this truth and they and you know esau threatens your children and tells you like look we'll kill your children if you don't take this chip we already know that's a very, very heavy thing to think about, but we already know what the answer is. We're going to say no anyway, because we have what? We have faith. We have faith that the most I can deliver us out of that situation and our children. Just for the simple fact that we're denying this system. So you got to think about that, man. You got to think about that. This is verse 17. It says, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But shall not, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. All right, this is what you got to do. You got to be patient, which is suffering. When these times come, we like I said earlier, you got to go through these things. Go through the suffering because it's gonna pay off before that big boom happens, which is the 200 million warheads that's gonna be shot over here, which consists of that nuclear destruction. When you see those chariots, the so-called UFOs show up. You're going to realize that the work that we've been doing right now, all the way up into the faith that we kept throughout Jacob's trouble is going to pay off once you see that bright light hover over your head, man. Once you see that, then you're going to be like, you know what? It was all worth it. We went through the persecution. We went through. We did the work. We did what we was told of us. And now guess what? We reached salvation. Everybody else is going to feel salty, man. They're going to feel less than salty, worse than salty, man. They're going to be afraid. They're going to panic. Their eyes are going to be wide open once they realize there's no escape for them. No miracles performed for them. That's what's getting ready to happen, man. So you got to be patient. Don't be flipping out when you see these things happen. We're reading about it right now. We already knew that it was going to happen. So as soon as you see it in real life, don't get shaky, man. This ain't the time for that. Let's get Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 10. And it says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, plain. If you get persecuted for defending this gospel, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Verse 11, it says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you great is the reward which is in heaven man if you go through this persecution 
and you don't fold, you don't hesitate. You keep the faith. The reward is the kingdom of heaven, man. You're going to be one of the first people to experience the new bodies. You're going to be one of the first pe people to experience uh, spiritual power. You're going to be one of the first people to see Yahweh shine in person and not on his angry side. You're going to rejoice with the other brothers and sisters that made it. This is what we're doing this for, man. This is what we're doing this for, for salvation, because we understand that there's life after this. See, a lot, the majority of our people, they, they can't think outside of the box. They can't think of anything outside of what they know right now. The only thing that they want to think about is, how can I come up tomorrow? We're thinking about a whole life that will never end. And how can we get there without messing up? That's what we're thinking about, man. So we're going to rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is our reward if we get persecuted right now, man. We will go through this persecution in order to reach the kingdom of heaven. That's real talk, man. Let's get Revelation 13. You already know we got to get that because what's the name of the lesson? If you did not take the RFID microchip. So you got to get this. This is Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to start at verse 15. And it says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you don't take this, this uh, chip, you're going to be killed. You're going to become an enemy of the state. And this is not a thing that's just going to happen in America. This is going to be a worldwide thing. You got to remember Esau owns all the whole earth. He's going to make sure that this is a worldwide thing. No matter where you live in that, when this happens, Okay, everybody's gonna be tested, man. No, it, it ain't gonna be no such thing as physical money anywhere. The only money is gonna be this the chip. Verse 16, and it says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark on the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and this number is 603 score and 6, all right? So this is what's coming. You won't be able to buy or sell. Pretty much saying you won't be able to live, literally, unless you take that chip, man. This is the great ram that's spoken of in Revelation 12 and 12. When you read 2nd Ezra 16 and 70, they shall be like madmen sparing nuns, martial law. This is the things that's getting ready to happen. Life is going to change completely very soon, man. You can't let distractions get you because there's a lot of things that's going on in the world that's keeping people distracted. You know, you got sports, Super Bowl, you know, after everybody finished uh, with the holidays and everything, you know, they, they do New Year's and then they give you January to quote unquote relax. And then after that, February hits, you got Valentine's Day, you got the Super Bowl, March hit, you got easter maybe <laughs> all right they never let up man they make sure that there's something special for you to look forward to every month pretty much so you can't let these things distract you then of course if you're a movie person or a video game person they always coming out with these new trailers yeah this is getting ready to come out soon that's getting ready to come out soon man i can't wait to watch this i can't wait to play that Oh, man, it come out in the summer of 2024, man. Let's go. We over here thinking that we might not even make it that far. Things could go sour literally next month if it wanted to, if the Most High allows it to. And this is why we standing firm for the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right. Let's get Revelation chapter 20. Because this was within the picture as well. Oh, I ain't put the E. Because as we saw, it said beheaded, right? This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai Hamashiach a thousand years years all right so there's going to be some of us that's going to have to die for this truth and one of the ways that we're going to have to die is being beheaded becoming martyrs because we rejected the chip all right 
But if you do that, what it say? You're going to live and reign with your house shy a thousand years. You're going to be one of the rulers. You're going to be one of the ones that help give the orders to build up the kingdom of heaven. That's an honor, man. That's an honor. That's coming from the power himself. And like, look, this man over here that stood firm, he done did what I told him to do. He kept the faith. I, I allowed Esau to put him to death and he still kept the faith. So you know what? I'm going to give him the greatest reward. He's going to have the biggest palace. He's going to have... He gonna, I'm going to allow him to give orders to, in this region or that region to make sure that everything goes according to plan. I'm going to give him a crown. All of this, man. It's going to be a beautiful time and it's going to be a, a job that was worth it, man. Because once you finish that work, it's going you're going to feel that, man. You're going to be like, man, I did that. Because we're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to see ourselves going out to the highways and the byways, going through this persecution. Because we lived it. We're going to be able to see it. And that's just going to make it that much sweeter, man. It's going to make it that much sweeter. Let's get one last scripture and then we'll close it out. We're going to get 2nd Ezra's. Then we're going to go to chapter 2. Then we're going to start at verse 42. Because this is the ultimate goal. It's the ultimate goal right here. It says, And I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at, marveled at greatly. This is speaking about Yahweh Shai putting the crowns upon the elect. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned and received palms, meaning victory. All right, they put off the mortal clothing. They came out of the world. We stopped celebrating holidays. We followed the commandments, statutes, and laws to our best abilities. We did what was told of us, and we kept the faith. And then once we did that, Lord willing, guess what? We put on the immortal, because yes, our bodies are going to be changed, and we're going to live forever. And yes, we have confessed the name of the Most High, the true name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right? And we stood firm with that. Verse uh, 46, it says, Then said I unto the angel, One young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood what? so stiffly for the name of the lord all right so this is what you got to do all right no matter what yeah this is coming yeah this might not look that serious because you know this is just a drawing but when you think about this inside of your mind you understand this how real it actually is gonna get this is this is what this is what esau wants to do to every single person that claims that they're in the truth whether you teaching the, the correct doctrine or not and this is why it's even more important to, to teach the 100% um, truth, man. This is why it's very important to teach the doctrine the correct way. Because the Most High may allow all of this to happen to you and you still don't make it out as the elect because of certain things that you were doing on this side. Here it is, the Most High can put the Spirit upon you to be like, no, I'm not taking that, I'm not taking that. And He still may allow you to die. Just because of certain things that you were doing before Jacob's trouble began. You don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's going to make it. So this is why every day you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to pray. Pray continually. You're supposed to keep the faith. And do what you're supposed to do every day to the best of your abilities, man. We do not live in sin. Remember that. You don't live in sin. We try to stay away from it as much as possible. So then that way, when these times come, the most I can protect us and get us to salvation, man. All right. So just remember that this is what's coming. Don't be afraid of it when it comes either. Just remember what the scriptures say. Remember Isaiah 33 and 6. <laughs> That's the main scripture. That's to come to mind when Jacob's trouble began. Wisdom and knowledge to be the stability of thy time. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. All right. So keep the most high in your mind. Keep the faith. And Lord willing, man, we get up out of here. Remember, it's only temporary. This ain't forever. 
It's temporary, man. Most I only gonna allow this to have it for so long before he's like, okay, it's, it's my turn to bring in my kingdom. So just keep the faith, man. So I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm say call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned his truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqwat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratiza, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.